Board of Adjustment, Monday, May 8th, 2023, regular meeting. I hereby declare this meeting of the Howell Township Zoning Board to be open. Adequate notice having been given pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meeting Act in the following manner. First, on December 13, 2022, a copy of said notice was mailed to the Asbury Park Press and the Tritown News. Second, on December 13, 2022, a copy of said notice was hand delivered to the clerk of the Township of Powell. Third, on December 13, 2022, said notice was posted in the office of the zoning board and on the bulletin board in the Howell Township Municipal Building, 4567 Route 9, Howell Township, New Jersey. Please take note that this meeting is being videotaped for possible future broadcast on Howell Township TV 77. This meeting is a judicial proceeding. Any questions or comments must be limited to the issues of what the board may legally consider in reaching a decision and the decorum appropriate to a judicial hearing must be maintained at all times. For any members of the public wishing to ask questions or comment on an application, you will need to use the raise your hand feature when the chairman opens up the hearing for members of the public. Once you are brought into the meeting, you will need to have both audio and video and you will be sworn in and required to give your name and address. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise or lower your hand and star six to mute and unmute yourself. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, can we let Jose in? He, sa he said he's waiting. Sure, I'll let him in now. Okay, Eileen, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Barilla. Here. Mr. Cantor is excused. Mr. Hughes. Here. Mr. Mertens. Here. Mr. Roscoe. Here. Mr. Stanton is excused or he'll be coming in late. Mr. Ryan. Here. Mr. Rubel. Here. And Chairman Saya. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, Eileen. Will everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Bear, can we have please have a swearing in of the zoning board professionals? Yes, can Christine, Charlie, and Sherry with us? <clears throat> uh, Christine and Charlie, please raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you, God? I do. I do. Just state your name. Each of you state your name for the record. Charles Cunliffe, P of TNM Associates. Christine Bell, PP of Leon S. Savakian. We lose Andy. Andy, did you get those two? Sounds like he's frozen. Up oh, there he is. Did, did, I don't know if the connection's me like or that. that everyone's hearing it. But it's in and out, so. I think you're getting that as well, Paul. I think it's you, but they're sworn in. Okay. I don't see I don't see Sherry joining us tonight, is she? I think Sherry said she'll be absent tonight. Thank you, Eileen. You're welcome. Okay, item five on the agenda, approval of minutes. Regular meeting, March 13th, 2023. Eligible voters, Barillo, Hughes, Mertens, Orozco, Ryan, Rubel, and Saya. Can I have a motion to move? I'll motion to move. Hughes. Second? I'll, se I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Mertens. Eileen, roll call, please. Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Merton. Yes. Mr. Rothko. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Mr. Rubel. Yes. And Chairman Sayeth. Yes. Minutes approved. Thank you. Regular meeting. March 27th, 2023, eligible voters, Brillo, Cantor, Mertens, Orozco, Stanton, Ryan, and Saya. 
Do I have a motion, please? Motion. Varroa. Second. Orozco. Eileen, roll call, please. Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Mertens. Yes. Mr. Orozco. Yes. Mr. Stan. I mean, Mr. Ryan. Yes. And Chairman Saya. Yes. Minutes approved. Thank you, Eileen. Item six on the agenda. Eileen, any vouchers? No vouchers tonight. How about item seven, correspondence? Any correspondence? Uh, one thing for correspondence, I received an email from Mr. Alfieri concerning Rod Zarelli application BA0824A. Uh, he wants to be rescheduled at a later date. Uh, we don't know the date yet, but he will re-notice. Okay, so for everyone out there, case number BA08-24A, Rod Zarelli. This application is being carried to a future date and will be noticed at such time. It will not be heard tonight. Thank you. Eileen, anything else? No, that's it for tonight. Okay, then we have resolutions. Item eight, on case number BA21-15, which is ZS Mill ILLC. This is resolution granting use variance sign variances, and amended site plan. Eligible voters, Barillo, Hughes, Mertens, Orozco, Ryan, Rubel, and Saya. May I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Who was that? That was uh, Mertens. Mertens, okay, do we have a second? Thank you. Second. Got it, Hughes, all right. Eileen, roll call, please. Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Mertens. Yes. Mr. Rosco. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Mr. Rubel. Yes. And Chairman Saya. Yes. Resolution approved. Thank you. Eileen. Applications before the board. First one up. Um, case number BA18-37, CTC Landscaping. Before we, uh, I read this, Mr. Mertens? Yes, Mr. Chairman. As I told you, Mr. Bayer, um, I am presently employed by the applicant, so I think I will need to recuse myself. I concur, Mr. You should not be uh, considering any matter of your employer, Mr. Mertens. That's a sound decision. Okay. So I'll see you guys soon. Yes, because we got another application. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'm not going any, I'm not going anywhere, Paul. So I'll, I'll be around. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. This CTC landscaping extension of time, application of CTC landscaping as applicants seeking two one-year extensions <laughs> of time through April 24, 2024, the applicant was previously granted a one-year extension of time. The applicant was granted use variance and minor site plan approval with bulk variances, memorialized on April 22, 2019, to operate a landscaping company on the premises known as Block 46, Lot 32-.01, 24 Herbertsville Road. Okay, Andy. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, certainly, I mean, the board has the legal discretion to do this if it so chooses. We choose. Okay, I take it, Mr. Keneally, is that the way you say it, sir? Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman, you correct, pronounced it correctly. Uh, I'm here on behalf of CTC. I think my client was supposed to connect, but I don't see him connecting. Uh, we're seeking an extension uh, the, the delay in, in this case was um, really an issue with the county. The property sits on a county right-of-way, and it took a while to get county planning board approval. The county required us to install curbing along Herbertsville Road um, and eliminate what had been um, sort of the ability to pull off Herbertsville to the farm stand. 
and reduce the access to be just a driveway. I, my client was going to testify if he's on, but I believe that work was actually done last week in terms of the curbing and the driveway entrance. They wanted it narrowed. Uh, I think he's connecting right now. He could further explain. But I believe the majority of the work is done, um, and we're just trying to trying to complete this application. Um, I see Chris is connecting, but I, he's muted, so maybe he can unmute his um, his microphone and, and his video. I'm not sure if he knows how to do that. Chris, if you can hear me, unmute your video and uh, and your microphone. Hello. We can okay. hear you. Click on uh, yes. Here. Yeah. We need video. You video, Chris. Uh, I'm trying. Bottom left of your screen. Can you hear me? We can. You can't see me. We cannot see you. I don't know. Uh, at for oh, Hello. We can hear you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I can't get it going. Andy? Well, we'd prefer to see you if possible, Mr. Uh, uh, Campanelli. Campanelli. Yeah. If you, Chris, if you look on your screen, there should be, if you touch it or whatever, there should be like a mute button and then a video button in the bottom left of the Zoom screen. Okay. And you would, you would click on the video. Uh, camera's on. I don't know what is going on here. My computer has a little door in front of the I'm, in, I'm on my iPhone right now. And uh, is your camera blocked? Or are you yeah. um, are you right? I could see I could see myself. There could be something blocky in the back of the phone, the camp where the camera is. That could yeah. that could be it also. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, you know, I can see myself. I can see the uh, every all the members on board. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, given the, the nature of this kind of application, I wouldn't be uncomfortable proceeding with Mr. Campanelli on audio if that's okay with you and the board. I believe that's okay. Uh, Mr. Campanelli, can you raise your right hand, please? Yes. Do you uh, swear, oh, Mr. Rubel, do you want to say something? Your hand up? I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. I thought you yes, had sir. some technology advice or something. <laughs> Mr. Campanelli, do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth? Oh, he's here now. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. You have to unmute the microphone now. <laughs> now we see you, but can't hear you. He did say, yeah, I do. I, I, I read his lips. <laughs> You're still muted. You're still muted, Mr. Campanelli. Let me see. Can I unmute you? I can't do it. Oh. Can you hear me right, now? We're good. We got you. Don't I'm not, very, I'm not very computer savvy. I'm, I apologize. Mr. Campanelli, we read your lips. You said, it. I do. You are now sworn witness. It's, like, it's, it's now to you, Mr. Canelli. And maybe you could just explain when the approval was and when the extensions are good through or when they expired. It's not clear from the description on the agenda. I think we're seeking approval to run to April 22nd, 2024. So basically uh, a little less than a year from now. Um, is, and I think Chris, if you could explain to the board um, what is outstanding for you to do, what, what was the recent work that you had to complete with the county and, and when you anticipate 
completing the balance of the work? Um, so when the county got involved, I was not able to back out into the uh, county road. So I had to get a curb and an uh, open road. So I got the curb done, that all passed. Um, so Mr. Meyer, then we had to relocate uh, the uh, parking. Uh, we got that done last week with uh, Mr. Meyer's approval of the uh, engineer. Now uh, we're at, we're about 90% done and I just need a few more months to finish up. And can you tell the board what work um, is remaining to be done? Uh, what work needs to be remaining is um, putting in the um, stock bin piles in the appropriate place. Um, everything else was resolved. And I think one of the issues in the board letter, in terms of the current operations, you are operating your landscaping business there. Correct. And the farmer's market is still there and the property is still farmed as an agricultural property. Yeah. Those uses have remained. Yes. <clears throat> okay, Mr. Keneally, if I may, Charlie. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, if some of our members who have been with the board for a couple of years recall, this property is like 1,800 feet southeast of um, Lakewood Farmingdale Road. It was an existing Q farm property with a farm stand. Uh, it's had head-on parking from Herbertsville Road. I apologize, the train's going by. Uh, it's had head-on parking for a number of years. Um, as part of the applicant's approval, they were required to get Monmouth County Planning Board approval. They had gotten resolution compliance from our office, but we're waiting on the county planning board approval. They ended up indicating the applicant, uh, the head on parking that had existed there for a number of years was no longer acceptable. They had to close off all that parking, relocate it to the south side of the structure, close down the driveway entrance. So it's just the one driveway that goes to the rear of the site. As you'll also recall, the applicant as, as part of their application process was significantly cleaning up the rear of the site. There was a number of boats, trailers, you know, throughout the rear of the site. The applicant applicant was doing away with all those with the purchase of the property. Um, they were required to do some landscaping plantings to the uh, buffer to the property to the north, which is a farm. Um, you know, a lot of these delays seems like they're related to some foot dragging by the county. Um, the applicant looks like they're now kind of turning that last corner down the stretch. I have no issue to the extension of time. I would just... Um, obviously indicate once the applicant goes to close out the town, you know, they've got to relocate those bins where they need to be and then just continue to operate in accordance with all prior approvals. <clears throat> Thank you, Charlie. Christine? I take no issue with granting the extension of time for this application. I think uh, Charlie did a pretty thorough uh, summary of it. Okay, Mr. Keneally? Any last minute summary here for you? No, you're no, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Campanelli, you know, we're gonna survey the board here and see what the pleasure of the board is. Thank you. Well, Mr. Chair, I would like to just go ahead and move that we grant the extension. It seems like the project's been moving along and it's being held up with a couple of outside uh, issues there. So I'd like to go ahead and uh, Make a motion to approve the extension. Motion by Mr. Hughes to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Orozco. May I have a roll call, please, Eileen? Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Orozco. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Yes. Mr. Rubel. Yes. And Chairman Saya. April 24th, 2024, extension of time, yes. Approved. Thank you. Thank you, thank Mr. Kennelly. Mr. Kennelly. I would like to say thank you to everybody tonight. You got it. Have a good night, guys. Thank Likewise. Bye-bye. All right, let's get Mr. Mertens back into the fold here. <coughs> Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to try to sign back in using a different browser because my connection seems to be unstable for some reason. All right. Are you sure, Andy? You've been doing okay with the way you are. Yeah. Okay. It's because it, sometimes the sound goes in and out. So, but I'm, I'll do my best. If I, I don't want to delay anything either. So. Not, not too bad. We could read your lips. 
<laughs> Look, we're, we're, we're closing in on June 10th where we're going to be live. So it'll, it's all good. I, I think we're all a little uh, tired of the, of the uh, computer stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Case number BA22-16, Paul Vallejo. Type is a bulk variant. Here's the description. Application of Paul Vallejo. As applicant and owner of premises known as 37 Jennifer Drive, block 33.02, lot five, seeking bulk variance approval for recently constructed in-ground swimming pool and associated paver patio that was installed within 0.7 feet of the easterly rear property line and 1.1 feet from the northerly side <laughs> property line. Relief is also required for a PVC shed structure which is installed within 1.5 feet of the northerly side property line. This application was previously heard on December 19, 2022 and February 13, 2023, when it was carried to April 10, 2023. Expiration is 31 May, 2023. Eligible voters are Barillo, Cantor, Hughes, Mertens, Orozco, Ryan, and Saya. Mr. Vallejo, and uh, are you representing yourself? Good evening, everyone. Yes, today I'm representing myself. Um, Justin uh, Asiello from the Confone Agency, um, unfortunately has COVID, so he wasn't able to join us this evening. Andy? Um, it's an individual, so he's not, there's no need, he doesn't need to be represented by a lawyer. Still sworn in though? Sure. Do you have an engineer as well, Mr. Vallejo? Yes, Mr. Um, William Boltz, um, if you can allow him to join. I spoke to him earlier. He said he was in. So I think he just, um, just it's, it might be under Bill Voltz. Bill Vol William, William Voltz, P.E., okay. I'm, bring, I'm bringing him in the meeting. Thank you. Mr. Bolt, also, I just want to make it clear that I asked permission from Mr. Osiello if it was okay to let everyone know he was ill and he gave me permission. So I just wanted to make sure that was clear because of privacy or anything. I just wanted to make sure. You got it, Mr. Vallejo. Mr. Walter, we're looking for video now. Mr. Voltz, we need to see you as well. Yep. There you are. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Sir, uh, can you please... Um, be, put your credentials on the record, and then we'll be. We'll, then we'll have you sworn in. Sure. Well, let me swear him in first, Mr. Chairman. You got it, Andy. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah if that's okay. So, that Mr. Voltz and Mr. Vallejo can raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay. And then. Uh, Mr. Voltz, if you could uh, state your name and then start providing your, your credentials. Good evening again. Bill Voltz, professional engineer, licensed in the state of New Jersey since 1980. I've appeared before over 100 planning boards and zoning boards in this state, including Howell Township Zoning and Planning Board. Mr. Uh, Voltz, where did you go to school? Valparaiso University, Masters at Rutgers. Thank you, sir. We accept your credentials. Thank you. And Mr. Vallejo, if you're going to, I'm not sure how you're presenting Mr. Voltz with, but just state your name and spell your last for the record, then you could proceed. No problem. It's Paul Vallejo, V-A-L-L-E-J-O. And I'm the homeowner of 37 Jennifer Drive in Howell, New Jersey. Okay, so Mr. Vallejo, we've this is the, this is the third meeting on your property, yes. <laughs> and um, Mr. And I'm, pray, I'm been, praying the last. <laughs> well, Mr. Cunliffe's been actively involved in uh, working with you, and Christine, I take it planning has also been keeping an eye on it. So, um, Charlie, did you just want to get cut to the chase here? 
Yeah, so if the board recalls at the last hearing, there were still some questions and concerns regarding two matters. Uh, the first matter was the fence located along the, uh, I believe it's the southerly property line to so the rear property line and encroached on the neighboring property owner lot 12. Um, at the last hearing, uh, the owner of that property had indicated that they had acknowledged that that fence was on their property and they would be amenable to granting some sort of easement for that fence to uh, be located on that property. The applicant has submitted a revised plan that was prepared by Mr. Voltz dated uh, April 28, 2023, which shows the approximate limits of uh, an easement for that fence. They also submitted a written description of uh, meets and bounds for that um, easement. Um, I would take no exception to that, uh, obviously subject to Mr. Bayer's review and approval as a <coughs> board approval. Uh, the second matter was regarding stormwater runoff. As you recall, the original plan that was approved by the township uh, had a pool in a different orientation with much more limited concrete around the pool. The applicant constructed um, paver patios pretty much to the property lines, both the uh, northerly property side property line and also the southerly slash easterly rear property line. Uh, we had concerns regarding stormwater runoff to the neighbor uh, immediately to the north, lot number six. Um, on the realized plan, the applicant has provided a deck drain, a slotted deck drain, one inch by three inches deep along that northerly property line, running the full length of the paver patio, uh, essentially daylighting, discharging to <laughs> the rear and at the uh, street side of the of the uh, dwelling. Um, I take no exception to the layout. There needs to be additional grades kind of shown on that. I think they showed it as one consistent grade, but the patio may not necessarily have been built with one consistent grade uh, from, from the uh, back of the property to the front of the property. Um, I would, my only comment would be, let's hear from the neighborhood <laughs> property owner uh, during public. We got a lot of rain two weekends ago, uh, like anywhere from four to six inches over like a three day time frame. If they don't speak up and say they have any stormwater issues or drainage issues, uh, I would say what they have shown is probably sufficient. However, having said that, if they have significant concerns, you know, I think that that little slot drain could be maybe upsized to the next model just to capture a little bit more water. But uh, let's hear what the public has to say on that. Thank you, Mr. Conley. Mr. Vallejo. Yes, sir. So you, let's hear from your engineer on what he has. The uh, the revised drainage plan that was submitted shows a, uh, a, a two inch wide uh, slotted drain discharging to the front of the property where there are sufficient grades shown in front along a swale directing the runoff to Jennifer Drive. And there's also uh, an emergency discharge to the rear, uh, uh, the southerly side of the property uh, should access water under the trench drain. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Vallejo, do you have anything else to add? Um not uh, reg regarding the the drainage. I do I just want to I do want to let you know that the pavers are uh uh pitched um you know appropriately from you know the the contractor that did install it. Um, so, you know, I mean, it, it was pitched. There's also a drain next to the deck. I know that's not the, the concern. It's the Northern property and the property, I think to the West, I'm hope I'm saying it right. But, um, and, um, when my neighbor, uh, the neighbor to North came on last time regarding the fence, he also had, um, expressed at the end there when Mr. Asiello had asked him, um, if there was any, um, uh, water issues or anything like that. And he had said, uh, none. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm hoping that this, uh, drain, um, plan is um, is uh, sufficient um, to you know I mean to to just move forward and and uh, and approve the the paper patio that I have out there. Okay, fellow board members, does anyone have any questions, Mr. Rebell? No, nothing for me, Mr. Chair. Okay, any other board members? I think we just need to hear from the public and. That would basically be my only issue. All right, Andy, are we satisfied with all the documentation up to this point in time? Yes, from a legal perspective, there are, there are no issues um, with the application, Mr. Chairman. 
Okay, so then, Mr. Vallejo, we're going to, you know, if you have nothing else to offer us other than what's on the record right now, we're going to open it up to public, if that's okay. Okay, um, but can I just share one more thing? Go just ahead, because it was, it was brought up. Um, also, the, I just, because I just want to make sure this is, we get everything squared away today, you know, I mean, even Eileen said, we, you know, we all want this to come to an end. Um, so um, the, I had provided pictures, it never, it never came up, but the shed, um, it was already approved by the township, the shed, but also I had provided, everyone said they were fine with the shed as long as it was shown that it was for storage purposes. And I had uh, provided three images last time that we never brought up, um, but that it was used for storage and that you could see that the uh, pool machine is in there, the lounge chairs, beach balls, it's full to the, it's, it's packed to the nine um, for storage. So I just wanted to make sure that was just addressed and cleared and, and, and on record. Thank you, Mr. Vallejo. And and the the neighbor for the easement for the fence, um, they're uh, willing and able um, to get that document um, notarized with me and and hand hand it off at the uh, county clerk's office. Okay, Andy. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Should the board um, vote to approve, we would just need to approve the form of easement to make sure it's legally acceptable and protects the interest that the board is you know um, looking would be looking to protect as a condition of approval as a condition of approval got it thank you okay mr vallejo if that's all you have and uh, appreciate it um, thank you board members can have a motion to open the public motion to open the public mr chair Hughes, do we have a second second second, second. All right, second. Orozco and Mertens, co, co, co seconds. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, <clears throat> I carry. Eileen, can we open up the public, please? Sure. The meeting will now be open to the public. If you are calling in, you can press star <coughs> nine to raise or lower your hand, and star six to mute or unmute yourself. I have no one from the public raising their hand yet. We'll give it a few. Still no one, Eileen? No one raising their hand. Okay. Motion to close, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that, sir. Mertens and Hughes to close. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we got a Aye. majority. Eileen, we're closing to public. Now close to public. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes. I do have one question. Uh, maybe it's for um, either Mr. Valera's um, engineer or Charlie. I'm just, I was just looking at something that said the um, pipe connection is uh, one and a half schedule, uh, schedule 40 piping. And I was just wondering if that was large enough. The, the installation on the plan shows for just a straight trench drain, no piping needed. I picked a standard detail that I put on the plan. Uh, the trench drain is actually sized somewhere around six to 10 gallons per minute, which would flow into it and then discharge from the ends. Okay, so no, no, no piping, just piping trench. Required. No piping is required. Okay. All right, that's what I was wondering. Thank you, Mr. Barillo. Mr. Vallejo, any f final comments, summation before we uh, ask the board to vote? Um, I guess I just, I just take care of everything. And then I, I just hand it in to the, that's my only question is once I have everything done, I get a final, I get a final survey. And the, once the easement is um, complete, I just, I hand it into the county clerk's office and I get, I guess I get a receipt. And then I just hand in my final survey. Once the drain is done into the township, there's like, there's no more meeting. I just hand it in. Well, first we got to have a, 
an approval by the board for you to oh, go. Oh, I'm that sorry. <laughs> right. Oh, okay. So, uh, but Thank yes, if, that was my if, question. If you, if you are approved, mm -hmm. I take it then, Charlie, that would be the procedure for him. Yeah, typically uh, resolution memorializing the application will be memorialized at the next uh, available meeting. Uh, from that time, you'll have to submit the copy if it's not already been submitted to Andy's office. The easement documentation is just making sure that it protects the interests of the board. Once that's okayed, you can go and approach your neighboring property owner to have them sign and record it with the Monmouth County uh, Clerk's Office and provide a copy to Eileen. And then the installation of the trench drain that would all be handled through the construction department and they'll do inspections and you'll provide an as built once that's installed uh, for their review and approval. But that's that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. Okay, fellow board members, um, on case number BA22-16, Paul Vallejo, there's still some conditions that have to be met before it is finalized. However, what is the pleasure of the board? Well, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. You. We've, definitely, we've definitely been a, a few meetings on this, and uh, obviously we've all been paying good attention. And I think it seems like things have wrapped up uh, pretty nicely. Putting our trust, of course, into Charlie and, and to Jen and with Christine's help and all that, I, I go ahead and move that we go ahead and uh, approve this. Got a motion by Mr. Hughes to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Approve to Mr. Vallejo. <laughs> Mr. Orozco. Okay. Eileen, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Barilla. Yes. Mr. Hughes. I'd like to just quickly add, of course, uh, just to reiterate the, uh, you know, the easement that we're going through Andy's office and, and with his satisfaction, of course, which I know is part of it, but I just want to reiterate that. And with that, I say yes. Mr. Mertens. With all the findings of facts, I'm good with it, and I vote yes. Mr. Rosco. Yes. Mr. Ryan. Yeah, with the rain of uh, six inches that we recently got, if that didn't bring anybody out in uh, opposition to it, I don't think anything will, so I vote yes. And Chairman Saya. As long as we follow through with what Charlie laid out for us as the process to bring this thing to closure, to fruition, et cetera, I vote yes. Application is approved. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Well, enjoy the summer now. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. All right, you still got <laughs> some work, Mr. Vallejo, but yeah, you know, I'm sure yeah, it's good well, here. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. My family and I are relieved. Thank you. Okay. Good. It's been like a, the cloud <laughs> since <laughs> July. So thank you so much. All You're right. Welcome. You guys all have a wonderful summer. God bless. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Take care. Thank you, Mr. Voltz, Mr. Vallejo. Okay, how's the board doing? We're ready. We got one more. We ready to, to shoot for it, or do we want to take five? Go ahead. Let's roll. Let's roll. Right. We're going to roll. Wrong. Case number BA23-01. A state of Margaret <clears throat> McLean. Type bulk variants on an undersized lot. Application of Margaret McCrink estate as applicant and owner of the premises known as Hulses Corner Road, Block 110, Lot 161.03. Seeking wow. bulk variance approval to construct a single family dwelling on an undersized lot in the ARE 6 zone. Like the lot was pre previously created as a subdivision in 1988 and was conforming to the ARE 2 bulk standards at the time. Variance plan provided depicts a proposed SFD with associated driveway, that's a single family dwelling, with associated driveway, private well, septic system, and lot grading improvements consistent with the 1988 subdivision plan, which by the way, if I recall, this was probably done by the, the, the planning board. And here we are, because we changed the zoning from ARE2 to ARE6. 
Mr. Cohen. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Todd Cohen, the attorney for the state of the applicant. Uh, I'm sorry, the state of Margaret E. McCrink, which is the applicant. I uh, believe Rob Siv, my engineer, should be on. We could bring mm -hmm. him in. I've also lost the whole board. I just see the chairman now. We're, We're here, Todd. Well, we he's the be best. Here, he's Todd. the best looking. He's the best looking one, Todd. So that's a good one to be looking at. It's weird. Every time one of you speaks, it goes to the individual. That's a setting in your Zoom, Todd. Yeah, I'm on the iPad for the first time because my computer was down. Uh, it's okay with me. If it's okay with you, I'm good. Well, I think you're being recorded correctly. Yeah. And you just view the gallery that should pick everybody up. Todd, you should have a view in your in your thing in your uh, in Zoom. You could change. You could change it. Uh, I'm afraid to get out. I'll get out of here if I touch the wrong thing. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, yeah, I don't. <laughs> touch hit more, maybe. I don't know. Backgrounds, webinar settings. I don't want. I don't want to lose this. I have share content. That's all I have. I'm looking for gallery view, but it just has participants. Oh, maybe this. Oh, oh. <laughs> I hit the wrong thing. How do I do this? Oh. We still have you, Todd. All right, but I, I don't. So just, just start broadcasting. Uh, oh, God. Where'd it go? Hold on, two, no, no. Sorry, I'm trying to get this back. I apologize. I, it's the setting is over there. I have to go to the. Uh, all right, good. Beautiful. Hold on. All right, I'm going to let me do this. Let me do this. How's that? We, we see you. We see and hear you. I see everybody now. Okay, good. I see Great. Rob. I think we're good. Thank you very much. All right. So, Mr. Cohen, do we want to have Mr. Sib sworn in? We do. I have a brief introduction, which is if basic, if you just give me a half a second, it's basically what you said. Uh, I just want to clarify a few things. The applicant seeking a bulk variance approval to construct a single family dwelling on an undersized lot in the ARE 6 zone. Uh, six acres are required, and there's 1.84 proposed. Lot was originally created by subdivision in 1988. By filed map and was conforming as to all ARE two bulk standards. Property was then rezoned in 1989 to ARE six. Applicant is not proposing a single family dwelling, just a subdivision. Um, anyone that buys the lot would then have to come back to seek a building permit with a plot plan that would conform to uh, all of the bulk requirements of the zone. Uh, with that being said, I would now have Mr. Rob Siv sworn. Mr. Siv, do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Please just state your name. Robert Siv, S-I-V is in Victor E. I'm a licensed professional engineer, professional planner, and certified municipal engineer in the state of New Jersey. I am a graduate of New Jersey Institute of Technology. I have over 25 years experience in the engineering field. I've testified before this board as well as numerous boards throughout New Jersey before. We accept your credentials, Mr. Siv. Thank you, Chairman. Thank and you. he's sworn as well, Mr. Chairman. Rob, you're also familiar with the uh, TNM review letter of March 13th by Mr. Conlip. Is that correct? That is correct. Could you briefly describe the proposed application for the board, and then we can address the minimum lot area variance and some of the comments to the letter? Sure. The chairman and Mr. Cohen described the site, but just real quickly again. The site is a vacant lot on the north side of Holsters Corner Road, approximately 1,000 feet east of Fort Plains Road. The site is currently wooded, undeveloped, has an area of approximately 1.84 acres, and was created, as mentioned before, as part of a minor subdivision filed in 1988. When that lot was created in 1988, the property was a conforming lot. And then again, as we stated earlier, since the subdivision, the property was rezoned to the ARE 6 zone, which is why we're here before the board. For that lot area variance and again there's no improvements proposed as part of tonight's hearing it's just that they can move forward with uh, a real realty transfer and then the person that buys a lot would prepare a plot plan for the appropriate house and go before the building department okay 
Charlie? Uh, there is one. Oh, I'm sorry, good. Now go ahead if you have more to offer, Mr. Oh, so there's the, the one variance that we're going for, which is the lot area variance. Um, there are a couple standards to address for this property as it relates to that variance. First, I would assert the property has not merged with any adjacent lot under the Lochner ruling since the lot was created as part of a subdivision in 1988 and was conforming lot at that time. So it wasn't like it was a lot that's been on record for ever. It was created as part of a board approval in 1988 and was conforming at that time. Second, the property owner has not created the hardship and has maintained the property as a separate suitable building lot. The only reason why it's non-conforming now is because of the rezoning. Um, it's still a vacant lot that can be developed on its own. Therefore, the subject lot is a standalone lot and it has not merged with any of the adjacent properties. So with that being said, Mr. Cohen has sent out certified mailings to the adjacent property owners asking if they're willing to sell a portion of their property or buy the subject property so as to reduce or eliminate the undersized lot area variance. It's my understanding, Mr. Cohen, that uh, we have not received any responses from the neighbors. That's correct. Uh, I have not as of today, and uh, proof of submission of those letters, uh, proof of mailing was submitted along with our proof of service uh, to the uh, zoning board last week. So perfect. So with that being said, the subject lot meets its burden of proof in that it cannot acquire additional area. It is in keeping with the neighborhood, which has a number of residentially developed lots on tracts of land that are in the one to two acre zone. There's about eight to 10 lots in the immediate area that are of similar size. And then when you head east along Holstice Corner Road, there's a number of additional lots that are about one to two acres. So that's the general flavor of this area. And then the size of the lot can be developed in accordance with the zoning officer's interpretation of the ordinance, which is Charlie's comment B2 which is you revert back to the standard that was kind of in place at that time, which we can apply with other than the six acre lot size. We can apply with the setbacks, the frontage and the maximum building height. So the lot will comply with those standards. So it's my opinion that we meet the positive criteria and that we promote sufficient space and appropriate location for the residential house, the lot's large enough. Um, it provides good civic design arrangement in that it's compatible with the neighborhood development. And it provides the adequate light, air, and open space because it is about a 1.8 acre lot. Um, with, the, with regards to the negative criteria, there's no substantial detriment to the public good. It's compatible with the neighborhood and it will not substantially impair the intent and purpose of the zone plan and or the zone ordinance. Um, so that's my testimony as it relates to the variance. Um, Charlie, do you wanna go through your letter? Um, I know your letter was geared more towards if the lot was to be developed, we meet certain standards. Um, it's the intent obviously to submit the plot plan and septic design when it comes time to do that. Yeah, Mr. Chair, um, so my comments would be, um, obviously the applicant indicated they're not proposing any development right now. Their in intent is to get the approval and sell the lot. I would just ask that any approval carry the requirement that the applicant record the resolution of approval with the deed so that when the property is sold, the property, the purchaser is aware of any restrictions that are in place in, you know, for the lot when they buy it. Um, Mr. Siv did allude to uh, there's a grandfathering provision in, in our ordinance where lots created by lawful subdivision prior to 2008 are subject to whatever the restrictions were in place at that time. Uh, the lot area requirement has not changed. This is ARE 6. Um, so it still does not meet the uh, minimum lot area requirement. Um, I will note that prior to 2008, there wasn't any building or impervious lot covers restrictions for this property. Obviously, there are now restrictions for the RE6 zone, uh, so we can't impose those after the fact. But what I would say is, as a condition of any approval, um, making the development of the lot subject to putting in dry wells might be something to alleviate any drainage concerns that may arise from a future development of that property. Um, Two other things that I want to make of note that I think should also make a condition of the future development is the applicant will obviously have to get all plot plan approvals from the township. They'll have to demonstrate compliance with the uh, residential driveway requirements. I believe that's section 188-19. Uh, and the reason that I say that is once the house is set back a certain distance from the road, it's got to be paved a certain width, you know, for fire access and those, those types of reasons. Um, and then uh, the other comment I would just say is um, they'll have to submit a grading plan with the plot plan for development. 
Uh, this applicant is, in an, is not in an area of public uh, sewer service, so they're going to need uh, a septic system, Monmouth County Board of Health approval. Um, I would just ask that once they get Board of Health approval, they'll have to show any proposed grading with that septic system. So if there is any need to mound the system, the grading can be softened so it's not uh, you know, a white elephant in a front yard area, things of that nature. Those would be uh, the only conditions that I would, uh, and then obviously if, if it was above 5,000 square feet of disturbance, they'd have to get real soil conservation district at that time. So like I said, I think those are proven conditions and then it just carried forward. So the prospective buyer knows you know, what they need to do when they buy the lot. Thank you, Charlie. So Charlie, question for you is, um, we're talking about what, west of nine, north of 195? Correct. It's uh, Holsey's Corner, like literally right uh, north of 195. It's right off of, I believe, Fort Plains Road. There's that uh, intersection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's like a thousand feet east of that intersection. It's a wooded parcel, kind of trapezoidally shaped. Uh, to the east of it is wooded and undeveloped. That's where the applicant's proposing to grade. Uh, that's not to say that something can't get developed there in the future, but uh, I think the dry wells, like I said, being that there's no building or impervious restrictions with the grandfathering, I think is, uh, you know, it's low appropriate for this. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Charles, Good you had thing. a comment in your letter regarding um, in a previous approval, there was a uh, U-shaped driveway. We were going to address that with possibly a K-turn situation. Would that be satisfactory? So uh, what I would say for this, when, when they go to plot plan, uh, I don't know what the driveway standards were at the time. Now we have 188-19. Once it's over 150 feet, uh, the code requires like a hammerhead kind of at the end of the driveway, just so that way if a fire truck or someone gets up their emergency vehicle, they can make the turn and come back out. I think, uh, you know, as long as it complies at 188-19, I think that's that's the, the major concern. Okay, that's reasonable, fine. Okay, Christine. No comments really from our end. You know, they did provide um, the buy-sell letters they sent out. Um, so they made an effort to see if they could create a conforming lot. Um, they are also attempting to, well, they will also conform with uh, all of the standards in place um, in 2008, uh, with the exception of law area, which they're seeking the variance for. So um, we really take no issue with this application. Thank you, Christine. Christine, when did 195 get completed? Do you, do you know when? I, I don't know that. Okay. If it was 33, the extension, I could tell you that was early 2000s, but 195, that's going back some time. Okay, in the 70s, maybe, I think. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, the only other comment that I would make is I had a comment about curb and sidewalk. Being that this law uh, lot was lawfully created by subdivision going back to 1988, I don't take exception with the board granting relief for that requirement, uh, especially since it's just one single lot, individual, single family dwelling development. And then looking at Google Street View and the adjacent properties, there's no curb and sidewalk along, you know, I want to say at least a thousand feet either side of that. So it would be out of place for that uh, part of town and, and that that uh, for that lot. You know, Charlie, you say that, but there's the but, right? There's the uh, there's the school bus is issue with the high school and um, and I think there's going to be more meetings on that coming forth with forthcoming with uh you know putting in more sidewalks than less sidewalks especially if the busing is truly going away yeah i, I th yeah not i that's definitely a valid concern i think the intent of the ordinance when it was readopted within the last year or two was for um these major developments major subdivisions large commercial properties for a single lot like this uh, you know I don't know if it creates a little bit of a, a hardship on an individual property owner for uh, for just a single family dwelling. But like I said, it's up to the board's discretion on whether or not uh, they want a grant relief of it and uh, any fees that may be required in association with that. And I think fees would actually have, technically have to be waived by the governing body uh, if, if required. Christine, sidewalks? Um. 
Jenna always says that the, uh, you know, if uh, someone needs to be the first one to put uh, sidewalks in, if sidewalks, um, no one puts sidewalks in, then you're never going to get any sidewalks. But ultimately, you know, it's the board's decision. Got that. Thank you. Mr. Cohen. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, on the sidewalk issue, I mean, it's, I just looked at the map. I think it's 272 feet. That would be quite a burden on uh, who's ever going to eventually build a house there. And again, as testified by Charlie, he attended back in 1988. Um, you know, the lot's been there the whole time. It's not like it's a new lot. But so any relief on that would be uh, would be highly appreciated. Uh, outside of that, I think the conditions Charlie laid out were very reasonable. Uh, we have no problem with them. Uh, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're good. Correct. That would complete our presentation. Okay, board members. Chair, I actually, <laughs> I'm slightly confused here. Maybe I'm missing something. We're not building a house. So what are we just approving the ability for someone else to build the house without right. having to come back to the board? You need a variance for the lot area. So you have to have a variance for that in order to build the house. Otherwise, right, you so couldn't apply for a building permit. All right, so if we grant the variance, then if they build their house within conformities, we don't, they don't have to come back here. That's the intent of this application. Oh, okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure I was clear because I was kind of confused that we're approving something that, okay, I got it, thank you. It's an estate sale. Yeah, the, yeah, that I understood. I just wasn't sure. So we kept talking about a house and then of this. I'm like, there's no house and all right, I got you now. We're just approving the future. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Martin. Mr. Chairman, going back to the sidewalk issue, I I concur with the town, you know, trying to, for safety issues. However, this road is pretty rural and I'm familiar with it. And I just don't know if it would cure our issues with safety by requiring the uh, potential homeowner to having to put it in. Um, in the right spot, I agree with Jennifer all the time that we should be putting them in. And the, on this road, I think you could be looking at losing trees and I just think it would take away from the character of this road. That's for what it's worth. I, I, I agree for what it's worth. I know the area. As long as we're 2.5 miles away from the high school, Charlie. Yeah, that's another, that's another point. I don't think we're near the school. So that was another reason. Charlie's looking right now. Come on there, Google Earth boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Mr. Chair, from Google Earth, it's approximately straight line distance, like four and a half miles from the high school. So it's- Okay, it's, so that, that area is gonna get bust either way. Yeah, we're, we're almost uh, at the Hal Jackson border where, the, where this property is. Got it, thank you, Charlie. All right, so fellow board members, anyone other, anybody else have any questions? Mr. Ryan, Mr. Rebell, Mr. Barillo, everybody's good. Mr. Roscoe. Okay. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. So then, Mr. Cohen, if you're resting, I'd like to open up to public, if you might may. That'd be good. Okay. Open the public, have a motion sir. To open the public. All right. Hughes, do we have a second? Second. We got a second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we got a majority. Eileen, please open the public. The meeting will now be open to the public. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise or lower your hand and star six to mute and unmute yourself. I have Victor Rocco raising his hand. I'm letting him in the meeting. Thank you. He put his hand down, never mind. No, his hand's back up. Okay. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Rocco, please put your video and unmute yourself. There you are. Yes. All right, Mr. Rocco, before you um, ask question of the applicant, um, I'd like to have you sworn in, uh, Mr. Bear. Yes, Mr. Rocco, if you raise your right hand, do you swear the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. He's sworn, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Rocco, it's yours. Yeah, um, I'm the uh, owner of the adjacent property to the one you guys are discussing. I'm, uh, I'm actually east of uh, that property. And I have just a couple of questions of the board rather than the applicant because I think they're probably more appropriately equipped to answer the questions. Um, why is it that uh, this lot can't be combined with the lot that they already own and better comply with the AR6 zone rather than having to acquire new land? And, you know, in other words, the, uh, the estate, I believe, owns two pieces of property there. One already has a house on it, and then this uh, vacant lot. And in my mind, to better uh, reach this AR6 zoning, uh, they could just combine those two lots. Like we were, like we had to. Yeah, now just to give you some history, uh, when I bought my property, there was a lot out in front of my house also. And later on down the road, when I went in front of the town to put up a, uh, uh, an auxiliary building, uh, they told me that I, they would like me to combine the lots uh, to the property that, you know, the, the main property. And so that's what we did. But again, I'm, I'm just curious why they just can't uh, merge the two properties. And then I guess they'd have about four acres. Okay, Mr. Rocco, that's a good question. So Andy, uh, we're going to turn this over to you first and then to Charlie and to, Jen, to Christine. What? I think that would be a question for the applicant's engineer or the applicant to answer, or Todd okay. himself. Well, the simple answer is, um, I believe the lot he's referring to is 16102. Um, that was previously developed for the last, I don't know how many years, since 1988, had a house on it. And that, that was sold previously, like in February. So my client no longer owns that lot, number one. Um, but it was part of a legal subdivision back in 1988 when the zone was what it was. So it was always a single lot that was always there. Um, it was never uh, part of that lot. Or, or the only reason we need a variance today is because it technically sits on a six acre zone there. What about that east? You know, that yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, again, at some point in time, the, the estate owned both, both pieces of those property, both pieces of that property. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely correct. Yeah. And so at that point, you know, why, why was one sold off individually uh, and, and knowing that you, then you were going to need a variance for this other one versus just combining the two lots? Well, it, it, it was a single family dwelling that was always there for 25 years, 35 years. They sold it. Okay, so now with, with their actions, they've created their own hardship by making this lot now necessitate a variance. You know, they, again, they, they were yeah, in control. They didn't they change were, the, the, the township changes only, not them. They got a legally conforming lot when they got the subdivision. Okay. Um, where, where then does this end, like with these variances for, for the... Uh, uh, for the property, uh, you know, more specifically, I'm in an AR6 zone and I own quite a bit of property here. Um, am I going to be able to then, you know, in the future, come in and get zoning for a variance for AR2, uh, for instance? This is for the board, I guess. You know, you're, basically you're setting a precedent at this point that in an AR6 zone, you know, you could have a smaller lot. Mr. Chair, what I'll, what I'll just say for the board is um, obviously any application before the board rises and falls on its own merits. Every application is its own application. 
Uh, you've heard from Mr. Cohen and, and the applicant's engineer. This lot, although it was undersized for the zone, was created in 88 by a lawful subdivision. Um, if the properties were in common ownership at some time after that subdivision, and Mr. Bayer can correct me if I'm wrong, there's a, a merger doctrine. It's commonly referred to as Lochner. That only applies to lots that were um, not created by lawful subdivision after like the state, the NJ State Planning Act, which goes back to, I want to say the 60s. So they wouldn't, therefore, because the zoning change automatically merge, especially if the ownership of the lots had changed and weren't you know, owned by the same property owner. Um, nothing has changed with the lot as far as the meets the bounds. It's just the lot area and it was imposed by the township with the changing in the zoning. Um, the applicants agree they're going to comply with any bulk standards that were grandfathered with a lot when it was created by subdivision and any yep. um, standards regarding the size of the dwelling as far as height, stories, and things of that nature. Um, and then also, as I think it's important to note, as Mr. Cohen indicated, they did issue buy-sell letters. Mr. Cohen, you issued to both the current owner of lot 16102 to the west and then also to the property owner to the east. Yeah, that's correct. And did you receive or the applicant receive any response uh, to those buy sell letters offering um, to buy or, or, or sell any portion of their property to make this more conforming? Not at all. I mean, I'll defer to Andy, but I think the applicant has done what they require to do in terms of MLUL to satisfy the requirement of an undersized lot. I, I agree as a matter of law, and I, and I think Mr. Sift also testified to the same point under Lochner. Yes, yeah. he mentioned it. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Rocco, um, you know, the professionals have laid it out there. Yeah, yeah, I, and I understand what they're saying. Uh, one final concern, of course, is the, uh, you know, is the runoff, the drainage of that property onto mine. You know, they're talking about grading it. And, you know, I, again, I am that property directly east of, of this one. Uh, right now, it's that, that obviously, as was stated earlier, that lot is very heavily wooded. Uh, there's about 40 feet of property that I own uh, that's heavily wooded. Uh, they are also, uh, that tends to, uh, you know, uh, stop, you know, rampant runoff and, and erosion and things like that. And I was wondering, you know, what is going to be done about maintaining that that kind of thing mr Where, rock my client yeah. has agreed as a condition of approval to place dry wells to help with the drainage um and he's also agreed to a grading plan to be submitted with the plot plan to make sure that the drainage works on the property so i think your concerns are valid but they are addressed okay do you have any other questions concerns no as long as that's all met that's okay yeah. with me as far yeah. as the todd the only Stipulation to that language, I would just ask at time of plot plan, the grading must demonstrate that the runoff uh, and any overflow of the drive will just be directed towards uh, Holster's Corner Road the right of way. And then that way, it maybe will also serve to protect that property owner to the east. It's going to the roadway where it's paved and it's got stabilized edge of the road and it's not just sheet flowing across their property. Would that be acceptable? Rob, does that work for you? Yeah, to the maximum extent possible, as long as we can get it there, Charlie. I and mean, sometimes the way the grading is is the way the grading is. But yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make every attempt to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think with the dry wells, that's going to be where the most of your runoff comes with the dwelling. So if those can be directed towards the front of the property, towards uh, Holsa's Corner, that, that would go a long way. We will okay. attempt to do that at that point. And it's also subject to Monmouth County approval when it comes to the septic. With the septic and then also with... And, and then also with free old soils, when they, whoever the lot is sold to and decides to get a plot plan, it's going to be over 5,000 square feet. So they're going to need to get soil erosion, sediment control, put up silt fence and all that kind of thing. So, you know, runoff of the of the slopes, if they're not fully stabilized, aren't, aren't just washing them onto the neighbor's property. Got I agree with Charlie on that. We're definitely going to be over the 5,000 square feet. So we will need that. Okay. There you go, Mr. Rocco. It's, uh... thank you. You're welcome, sir. Eileen, anyone else? No one else from the public is raising their hand. No one's dialing in? No. Okay. Since we have no one else, uh, 
we can put, move, move Mr. Rocco back to the uh, attendees. And a motion to close the public, Mr. Chair, if you'd like. Mr. Hughes, motion to close. Do we have a second? Second. We got a second. Mr. Mertens, all in favor? Aye. 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 We got a majority. Eileen, we're closed to public. Meeting will now be closed to public. <clears throat> okay, board members, any questions? No. Charlie, any last words? I would just... I would just say, uh, as I noted previously, uh, I, I think it's prudent to uh, the applicant be required to record the resolution of approval with conditions as a deed restriction on the property, just so that way the prospective buyer of the property knows what they're buying and it's no question marks. Andy, you got that, right? I do. Thank you, sir. It will be in the resolution if approved. <laughs> Christine, what do you have for us? Unmute, Christine. Sorry, I think I had unmuted myself and then remuted myself. Um, <laughs> I really have nothing uh, further for you. I think uh, Charlie did a great job of explaining, you know, um, how they met the required, um, how they did what they needed to do to, you know, because it is a non-conforming lot. Um, I really have nothing for it other else for. It. All right, thank you. Okay, Mr. Cohen. Yes, sir. Um, applicants in agreement with all the conditions. Yeah, a lot's been there for a very long time. I think uh, it's going to be developed with these conditions, and the nice house will be there eventually. And we'll be respectful of the drainage, make sure it doesn't interfere with the neighbors. So. With that being said, uh, we've agreeable to those conditions and would ask the board to approve the application. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve this application. I believe uh, with all the stipulations and the addressing the grading down the road, I think uh, I have no issues with it. And again, with the distance from the school, I think we can uh, no one have to worry about the sidewalk going in. I'd like to keep it the way it looks now. Mr. Martins, thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Barillo. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Eileen, can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Barillo. Yes. Mr. Hughes. Yes. Mr. Mertens? Yes. Mr. Rosco? Yes. Mr. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Rubel? Yes. And Chairman Saya? You know, this is a special part of town. And uh, I agree with Mr. Mertens. We keep it in its pristine location without the sidewalks and I vote yes. Thank you. Application is approved. Thank you very much for your time this evening, everyone. Thank you, board. Good seeing everybody. Good Thank you. Okay, Eileen. That concludes yes. the agenda. When's the next meeting? May 22nd. May 22nd. I'm going to be away. I just want to remind everybody. Okay, Hughes will be away. What do we have, uh, Eileen? What do we have on the agenda? Anything where we're going to need seven? Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I have Countryside and Castaneda, and then an extension of time. Well, I can say I will be in my RV. I will have connectivity. I think so. I'll, I'll keep my eyes if we need another body. I'll see if I can sign in. Um, you know me. I always try. I think Countryside will apply to to uh, push the meeting back as well. Okay. I don't know that, I mean, council would have to do that, but I think based on the last conversation that may happen. Okay, great. So that means um, if we get pushed for a special meeting from council or planning board, 
will be notified. So this, this meeting might be the last Zoom meeting that we have. Otherwise, May 22nd, it's it. Uh, I thank all members of the board for their participation in this evening and, uh, and the professionals. It's all good. Um, oh, one of the attendees got a hand raised and that was a while back. Um, but with that, uh, you know, I, I would like to go ahead and have a motion to adjourn this meeting and, and everyone enjoy the weather. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. First and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Eileen, you have a great night. This meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everyone. If I don't see you, I'll see you live. Good night.